Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors, America's only daily outdoor TV show. Your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors in Winston Chester. Glad to hear this Friday morning. It's been a great week here in Panhandle Outdoors, and we've got a great week next week. But first, let's talk about today's weather brought to us by Haney Technical Center at the corner of Baldwin Highway 77. High today is going to get to 75, low 54. Still a little cool in the morning. And water temperatures are now hanging in there at 71.1. Let's take a look at our river readings brought to us by Sand Hill Seafood. And Gail and I are able to get up there uh, Wednesday afternoon and have a really good uh, meal, really good fresh seafood. Uh, the Apalachicola Blunstown, 7.3, steady. The Choctatchee at Caraville, eight foot. It's, got, it's dropping out pretty fast now. It was at 10, it dropped down to eight. In a couple of days, by Sunday, it'll be down about six at this rate. It's going, but we've got a rain coming in uh, maybe Sunday, uh, and so we might be back up there. So we want to go ahead and plan the weekend accordingly. Our tide chart brought to us by Kent Forest Lawn. We talked about the great tides we've had the last couple of days on into the weekend. Really strong tides, two foot range, 1229. Right in the middle of the day will be the high tide and low tide at 1156 at night. Now this is almost perfect tide. So you've got a strong incoming tide in the morning, right around noon and all is going to sort of stay still a minute. They're going to be going out really strong. So that bait fish has really been concentrated up in some areas that uh, the wind's got them pushed up in some areas. So if you find those bait fish, look for those pelicans diving, and uh, look for the action on the water, you're gonna do good in the base system. Our, our marine forecast will be east, northeast, about 10 to 15. It's been 10 to 15 to 20 uh, every day. And uh, let's go into our fishing game times at this segment here, brought to us by Blue Water Outriggers. We're looking at 4.37 to 6.37 a night, and this evening, 5.07 to 7.07, okay? I'm sorry, this morning was 4.37, so that's that beginning of that incoming tide, so that's looking good there. All right, let's go ahead and take a break, and we'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. So glad you're with us. I know you're getting excited about doing some outdoor stuff this weekend. If you're going out to eat now, one of our great advertisers, Sand Hill Seafood, this is their new hours. They've got new hours. This is a restaurant now, really simple. Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, from 11 to 3. We ate about 2 o'clock yesterday, and that was really good. And Thursday, Saturday, 11 to 8. So they're going to open at 11 o'clock, and on weekends they stay open at 8. A lot of restaurants use those hours. But now the seafood market is open every day, uh, 8 to 6, and closed on Sunday. So uh, everybody go to church, so Monday through Saturday. So I just want to give you those hours, too. And I'm always trying to pass on good tips to you for outdoorsmen. And, and by the way, stay tuned. Uh, be sure and tune in Monday morning. You're going to have, uh, really enjoy our guest. going to be coming, a uh, young man, to do a lot of outdoor stuff, and especially uh, he's backpacking and on the App Appalachian Trail. So you're gonna, we're going to have a good show with, with Austin Givens coming on Monday. Uh, one of the things, I had these pants on the other day. Uh, we're talking about wearing, you know, out outdoors and pants, and, uh, and these, these unzip. And uh, I've always loved these kind of pants because in the morning it's cool, then you unzip them after the bug's biting you. But anyway, there's a little zipper here. And when it first came up with the pants and all, you, you couldn't, when you put them back together, you couldn't tell right leg or left leg. Well, now <clears throat> they color code them. You, you may or may not be able to see it. See, this is red and this is red for the right leg. And it was just so cool because uh, it used to be frustrating. You know, you'd get them all turned around and you couldn't tell what was what. And the zipper had to work one way and it just was time consuming. But, uh, you know, get, these are North Face. This is a good brand. And, uh, Gail bought these for me maybe a year or two ago, but there I use these a lot. Most of mine are light color. This is the only dark color I got. But uh, you know, get some zip up leggings and all. That's a good outdoor tip. And now the other outdoor tip I want to give you. I, I've always been fascinated with you know with technology and all how how everything advances and, and with the experiments and all. Check this out. This is a steel. This is a battery powered saw. Now, I love chainsaws. I go way back to a kid. We had a big old pooling, big old bow saw, which as I look back on it was a very dangerous saw. I mean, a big old bow, and we'd you know pull on the thing. And, and what's aggravating over the years is these gasoline engines. Uh, you, you might cut firewood one year, next year, that saw just, you're gonna have to take it to shop. And then you're gonna have to pay $40, $50 to get it tuned back up. And you do that about three times, you've already got $200 back in the saw. So I've been waiting and praying for a good, strong battery powered saw. Well, here it is, folks. This is, this is a 40, this battery right here is 40 volt battery, a 40 volt battery. 
And so watch this, okay? I just push a button. Now I can get 100, 100 minutes. I told you I was up in the woods the other day, and I tell you, it's very lightweight. I mean, it got a little bit of weight to it, but I mean, you can really work with it. I, I love this thing, and uh, it, it'll cut up to six inches, and you get a 100 minutes on it. And I want to go and tell you, I got it from Seoul, and I went up there, and I was talking to Robin, uh, and uh, you know, he's the owner now. I said, Robin, tell me about these because I'm a little reluctant on, on these batteries because a lot of them, you know, not as what to say, but this was a steel brand. And he said, he said, I bought my wife one the other day. He said, we love it. And that's all I needed. So I bought it and I am so tickled with it. It can do, if an outdoors, you start to think about, right now I'm clearing off an area of the road to take my camper into my property, uh, so get, making it wider. So I can go up here and, and, and you get 100 minutes on this thing, 100 minutes off this uh, battery. And you start to think, a lot of times, I, I, I counted uh, the other day, six seconds, you, you got everything cut, so most time within five to six seconds. And so you, you, 100 minutes is a long time. And uh, yeah, I, was just, I just want to pass this on to you in the outdoors, man. I just love this little thing right here. And I, we had the best time, okay? Also, uh, I want to mention, again, the FWC meeting next week. They are going over some uh, odd and end things, that, but uh, it's important. We talked about the Red Snapper, the governor, has already talked about Red Snapper, and uh, we, we already got a we already got a uh, situation set up on it. Let me see if I can find it. Let me go and do this one right here. Uh, I just want to just throw this out at you. Snakes, okay, on the left are venomous snakes. Not it's not up there, okay. Uh, what happens sometimes? You stay off the air, uh, off of it, and then it'll it'll fall off. So uh, give me a second. Anyway, a lot of times we're talking about snakes this time of year and they're venomous. I was going to show you an idea of what to look for and everything. And here is, we got it right here, okay? And photos. Well, let's go and read this one. This one's up. I want to go and read this. Navarre Beach, hey, coach, finally had a good day. Eastern Navarre Pier, first rod out at first light, went early. Could only use two rods due to a strong southwest wind. I had eight strikes, one black drum, one 30-inch redfish, caught and released six pompanos, and two of them about 12 inches, and I released those. Uh, four good pompanos, all on fish bites. Look forward to every show. Thanks, Coach. Larry from the Funex Springs and the Bent Rod Fishing Club, going down to Navarre there. And uh, here are the snakes I was talking about real quick, the venomous on the left and non-venomous. They're going to, uh, uh, we're gonna talk more about those later, but uh, we're gonna help them identify them, okay? Um, let's go and finish up this segment. Our pickle jar, you can see it's full, and I, I've decided to, you know, the only way to do it, when I turn them sideways, they're going to be falling out. So whatever, whichever one I have in my hand between my fingers now, I'm going to go ahead and count that one. So I'm going to, all the time, dig in here. I know they're going to fall out when I pull it out, but I'm going to dig in here. You can see we've got a lot of, a lot of folks interested in winning something. I wish all of y'all could win. And winner of the Sand Hill Seafood Seafood Platter is going to be from the Sand Hills, Bo Jones. Our Bo, Bo Jones from the Sand Hills. We'll put that down right here, and uh, we'll, we'll be right back after this break. Okay, real quick, let's uh, look at these F this FWC meeting next Wednesday, and just on the agenda, I'm gonna just show a couple of things they're still gonna do. One thing, they're gonna do a staff report on the sharks coming in, different things about sharks, they're gonna talk about that. Uh, then another, they're gonna have a lunch break, and this is like a two-day event. The other thing, sheephead and triple tail. They've got a workshop on the sheephead and triple tail, be coming in on some information on that. So. Uh, and then also they were going to talk about, they are take another break, they have a lot of breaks there. And also in the middle page of West Bay Oyster Harvesting, they're going to talk about that. So all those things will be important. And so just because uh, they're not going to get announced anything on Red Snapper, it's still important they get to do a lot of that too. Okay, I want to go ahead and mention, uh, the other day I got to go by and see Bill McNeil. He's, uh, I've had an uh, interview with him before, he makes the nets, Bill McNeil from St. Andrew. Uh, he's in his 80s now, been making nets for like 68 years, I think he said. It's, it's amazing. And making over 100 nets a year. So you can imagine the amount of handmade nets he's making. He slowed down a lot, teaching his son Tim how to do it. Uh, if one went by a visit, Bill had been on the weather a little bit and had a great visit. One of them was talking about Howard Creek, and I found out something I've been wanting to find out for a long time. In 1955, he was a young man. He and his dad went down to Howard Creek, and they just opened up this boat landing called Howard Creek. 
to sell. And Doc Whitfield was the one, the, the developer, he just bought a big chunk of land and started, he wanted people to come down and have a little fish camp, so he just cut up lots. But I've always wanted to know what the original lots cost at Howard Creek, and Bill had to answer. He said he and his dad went down there, and they bought three lots at Howard Creek, and in fact on Turkey, if you know where Turkey Road, they're named Turkey and Bass and that kind of place. And he said, uh, I said, well, Bill, how much they cost? Well, folks, original lot at Howard Creek cost $300. So they bought three for $900. And we bought one on the corner, he had to add $50 with it. So he said it was $950 cash right there. So anyway, that's, that's what they, they cost a little bit more than that now. So I just want to pass out a little bit of trivia, a little bit of history there in a lo local panhandle. Now let's go to these. I didn't finish this up yesterday because we ran out of time, but I want to finish up these fishing spots for the Pompano. I covered the west end yesterday, now I want to cover the east end. I, I finished up yesterday at Crooked Island Beach, and I did want to mention that. I want to I sort of rush through it, but uh, you have an area you want to go in at a Tyndall Beach right there where it's marked, and you can walk out and then walk down in a, in a westerly direction and, and fish, and I, I used to fish a lot there on the beach. Or you can put in a Davis Beach and come come up there and, and like I say, uh, park in that area of your boat and walk across. So Crooked Island, of course, Mexico Beach. We, we talk a lot about Mexico Beach, uh, where the, you know you got the pier there coming out of the canal, and anywhere where you see that 30 sign, anywhere in there and get away from people, especially early in the morning. Pompano fishing is a little bit better uh, closer toward the pier than it is going down on the right hand side there. Uh, then of course Cape San Blas, and it's no secret where where I get to do a lot of fishing. That's Eagle Harbor there, and right in the center of the page. And really, any of these, any of these places, and of course the State Park is up top right there. The State Park, right there, excellent area to go surf fishing there, okay? So these are all public now. Coming across the St. George Island Bridge, it's got a public area right there. The bridge hits the uh, island, straight in front of the bridge is a public area. You wanna get there early and fish early because it gets crowded, but go on down okay, to the east, okay, and you will come on the State Park, and that is a great place to fish. Uh, you can go all the way to the tip, but really, there's some access points along the way, and you can uh, really get some good surf fishing in right there. Uh, again, all public land I'm t talking about, okay? So anyway, that's, and there's some other places too, off Dog Island and all, but that's, I showed you that's the top 10 places all the way from Destin Jettis to here. And a lot of those are public access places uh, like at the West End are good. So just keep that in mind. I want to make sure uh, you have this. I did get this picture of jo Jason Shingler called some respectable sea bass. Sea bass is really good eating. And these captains have had a tough time uh, just taking their clients, getting out of the wind. It's been so tough to get out of the wind. So they're doing, they're very talented in trying to find places. If they can't catch speckled trout or redfish, they can get sea bass. And they're, they're very flexible in being able to move around like that. So uh, make sure you, you uh, appreciate what these local captains do. And again, the, these captains, they make a living off the water. So if you have people coming down, uh, you don't have to take them out to catch fish yourself. Let them go with a charter little trip with a captain and all, okay? I was, wrote down last night, that, you know, we got an early picture from Corey Godwin about those uh, Pompano, or the little email. And he, the Bent Rod Fishing Club was well represented. Uh, we went to that meeting and all, and I was thinking it'd be neat, you start to think about this now, it'd be really neat if you had a lot of fishing clubs throughout the panhandle with some neat names, and y'all just meet once a month and have lunch or something, and just talk about fishing. I had a great camaraderie and better planning some trips and all, but you know, with, with the media, with social media like it is now, you can sort of set up your meetings and, and just sit down and have lunch, and that's what they do. And I thought about, I picked up four. If you live in this, in this area, now come up with some kind of neat name. I, I didn't have time, I, I just sort of started rolling last night when I was sitting down thinking about this. If you're from Southport, get a group of people called the Southport Slammers. If you're from Freeport, uh, the Freeport Fishing Fools. If you're from Weewaw, the Weewaw Whackers, Teloja. The loads of thumpers, and you go on and on. Just get a group of people to enjoy fishing and uh, and have a club meeting and all. Just something I, I, I thought y'all would enjoy, especially on a Friday. All right, now we're going to add a couple more names to it. Now, speaking of Corey Godwin, we got Corey Godwin from the Funiac Springs, and he had a good good fishing trip up there. And also uh, Katie Cumby from Fountain, and also Brewster Cobb from Fountain. We'll add those names in here. And we're not going to give away rod and reel today because of all the seafood, but next week now, we're going to try to give away, we're going to try to give away one or two a day. All right, so, but this is, all right, this is talking about seafood, and uh, I, I don't know, but it's so full now, I, like I said, they're going to spill out, but I'm just going to turn them up, 
and, and go down here somewhere. And what I'm going to do each week, maybe so maybe I just jump upside down and put them back in so they I, I really can't stir them up much now. Well, uh, anyway, all right, the winter, Tarpon Rock Seafood. Clay, are you watching so you can write this down? All right, the winner of the $20 gift certificate is Dia Khalil at Seacrest Beach. Uh, the Khalil family, good, good fisherman, good outdoorsman. Okay, and the winner of the rest snapper is going to be, I didn't see, I didn't tell, bring any out. It's going to be uh, Rodney Johnson from Conard. So we got Sea Seacrest Beach and Conard, two good communities there. Rodney Johnson, you got a big red snapper. Like I say yesterday, you know, try to pick up your stuff within uh, within a week or so. If you're going to be out of town or something, call me and let me know what's going on. And also the rod and reels, try to get those uh, within a week or so. And uh, Donna is our receptionist here. And when you ring the doorbell. Uh, she'll come to her and ask, tell Donna you're a big winner and you want to pick up your stuff on the rod and reels. Now you pick up the seafood from Tarpon Dock and also you go up to Sand Hill Seafood for your seafood platter. So we've got a lot of winners, a lot of good things going on. So we're going to take our final break, come back with our famous fishing report. All right, welcome back to our famous Friday fishing report on our new set and all. So we're going to try it out. We may get through it, we may drop something, whatever, but uh, we like our set. Thank you all so much for uh, all the comments on it. Appreciate it. First report, of course, uh, Mitch Coleman sent this in. It's interesting. Uh, water has been churning, but it has stayed clear. Uh, there's been a lot of ways, but the water still staying clear. Water temperature is 69 to 70, same as it is up here in the St. Andrew Bay system uh, near shore. Uh, no Cobia reports. I'm, let me go and mention now about Cobia. Uh, there just had not been a lot of cobia caught this year. I mean, we should be right in the middle of cobia, and there's been a few caught, uh, especially last uh, last couple of days after the storm. But overall, it's way, way down on the cobia report. There's a Facebook page, and I sort of follow it a little bit. Just it's called Cobia Crazes, and it follows you know from Pensacola all the way down to Tampa. And those people are real serious about it. And there hadn't been a lot of pictures posted on it, so that's not a good sign. Spanish mackerel has been good, he said, and also some pompano on the beaches, as we know, and some large whiting are being caught. And whiting are really large now. So let's go ahead and go. I want to go ahead and mention, uh, as we get into here, uh, the Apalachicola River system. This map behind me, this green map, is a painting of this area right here. So this is, a, it, like I say, this is one of my favorite places to go. And let's see. Hold on. <laughs> all right. So anyway, that place go to River System, uh, uh, Wutapo and all these areas, different places to go uh, in the East Bay and all these creeks that feed in the East Bay and Apalachicola and, and St. Andrew Bay, this creek's going to be good. But the Apalachicola River System, what, what I like about it, you can get out of the wind. That's one thing I want to bring it up today because the wind's been blowing so long. You can put in an Abercrombie Landing and you can get up in all those feeder creeks and you're out of the wind. And that's the biggest thing compared to being in an open bay system or an open lake. And that's one of the beauties of it. So, uh, but like, like I was say, t uh, saying earlier, the, the big thing on, on the pompano fishing is compared to the river fishing and this is, is the weather conditions. Uh, especially got a lot of waves coming in, pompano fishing it sort of stirs up. But again, the big thing on this river system and, and I'm going to try to fish Howard's Creek this weekend and also come down, come down and fish over here on, on uh, I would like to go behind St. Vincent Island, okay? But uh, it, it's not, it's not this area right in here, you put an Indian Pass and fish in this area right in here, some re really, really good fishing, great flounder fishing up in here. They'll get up in that area, that's one of them well-kept secrets. I would like to get back some reports too on St. Vincent Island. I used to love fishing, old oh, Benny Forehand and I, Caught a lot of fish out of these five lakes right here, and but uh, I hadn't heard a lot about it lately. Okay, let's move on along. Uh, we were going to, uh, we talked about this yet, uh, about where to fish here. The trout fishing has been pretty strong as far as the size of the trout. The size of the trout's been really good, uh, but it, uh, the amount of them has, hasn't been a lot, but it's been some really good, good uh, places to trout fish. Great place of pompano fish right here off this point too, I didn't mention that, but you gotta have a boat to get here. So trout and redfish in the bay, okay? Let's come on into here. The Spanish mackerel, we'll, we'll skip Crooked Island Sound because we just talked about it. They're talking a lot about East Bay. East Bay, folks, is one of the premier places to go. I'm, I'm telling you. One thing is not a lot of traffic there until we talk about it on the show and then a lot of people start going. But still, you can move around. There's some great marsh areas. You've got some feeder creeks and all. But East Bay, along in here, the red fishing, the red fishing guys do a lot of fishing over in there. Now, of course, the Spanish mackerel, they're, you know, they're still out in here. They're way on the tail end of the run. There's still some being caught. 
Santa Andrew State Park, they're catching lots of point here. We'll talk about that almost each week, but it's been strong. Again, if you don't have anything else to do, you just want to have fun catching big fish, catching big bull reds here under the bridge. You just want to make sure the water's moving. This bridge system also over on the Choctatchee Bay, the bridge right there is going to be strong. West Bay should be strong. Both creeks coming in West Bay should be really good fishing tomorrow. Uh, I, I'm just thinking uh, it's just going to be excellent here tomorrow, okay? In West Bay, uh, up in North Bay where I live, uh, that's why we've had this wind blowing. And I've watched these pelicans all week long in the afternoon, I mean, just dive bombing off my, way off my dock and all, all up in North Bay up toward the dam. It tells me one thing, and you need to understand this, they're, they're not dive bombing for the exercises. They're going down there because a bunch of bait fish where the wind has blown the bait fish, okay? The south wind has been blowing really strong, so be aware of that. Same way in the Choctatchee Bay. Now that record, if you haven't seen that, that interview I did with uh, Joel uh, Singletary on that record blue catfish, I actually went to his house, got his story, spent some time with him, and uh, we've had over 500 hits on, on the YouTube. It was last Friday's, I believe it was last Friday's when we showed it, I believe, but anyway, Tell your friends about it and go watch it because that was a monster catfish, 121 pounds when the state record is 69 pounds. But what was great, and we just dropped what we were doing, ran out there and talked to him and got that interview exclusively here on, on Panhandle Outdoors. We're very proud of uh, Joel giving us, inviting us up to his house to talk about that. Chalktatcha Bay, uh, again, uh, this area right in here, this, okay, I'm going to show you. We, we talk a lot about the Apalachicola River system, but the Choctatchee River system is strong. Yeah, all these places up here, all these creeks and all, Black Creek and all, some excellent places to go. But you can catfish, uh, he, he got those catfish uh, on, on a trot line, and there's, there's some guys that do it commercially. In fact, the catfish I had at Sand Hill Seafood the other day, commercially caught on the Choctatchee River, and it was really good. That's just good tasting catfish right there. So. Uh, I've got, I'm about to run out of time, so listen, we're going to wrap it up. Thank you all for watching the show this week. We've got all kinds of good things coming up next week, and we're getting ready to go into some really serious fishing as we're approaching the month of May and the full moon. You have a great weekend. You do something good for your fellow man today, and God bless. Thanks for watching America's only daily outdoor TV show, Manhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester, featuring hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.